to address the audience. The Honorable Sri Nada, uh, Sri Naik, uh, Sri Sharma, Sri Kang, my colleagues uh, Osama and Hendrik, um, distinguished guests, including people living with HIV AIDS, and ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen here, in the, here in the gathering. I'm really delighted to be here with you today as part of the observations of World AIDS Day 2015. And let me start by thanking the National AIDS Control Organization, plus the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare for bringing us here today on this very important topic. As you know, we're also talking today about stigma and discrimination, and therefore I want to start by saluting the hundreds of thousands of people affected by HIV AIDS who have come out in the open about their HIV AIDS its status for discrimination and exclusion and have contributed and continue to contribute to shaping policies and programs to improve various initiatives. Let me also uh, take this opportunity to congratulate the Government of India on being able to reduce new infections through its comprehensive program focusing on prevention, care, treatment and impact mitigation. As, you many, as many of you know, world re leaders recently came together to adopt the Sustainable Development Goals, and in there they made a very important commitment to accelerate progress towards ending the AIDS epidemic in 2030. It is anticipated that this will not only lead to common ground and understanding of what the common problem is, but indeed also to inspired action to really end the epidemic by 2030. We, know, we also know that AIDS is a disease of inequalities and exclusion. The SDGs provide an opportunity to address HIV AIDS, health and development in a more inclusive and integrated manner, which will ensure no one is left behind. It is also not just, as we often know, wisdom that is often lacking, but also courage to implement some of these very difficult decisions. And therefore, ending AIDS is, as a public health threat will require not only reducing inequalities and exclusion, but also, for instance, empowering women and girls and creating more inclusive and peaceful societies. As I once heard one of my uh, colleagues uh, who was living with HIV AIDS mentioned, and I think it's a very appropriate quote, he said, we are as close as solving the challenge of HIV AIDS as our common commitment as a society towards solving the problem. Therefore, I'm also very happy that it is indeed the case that India is ahead of several countries on this front. Seven, several central and state governments have tweaked policies and made more inclusive uh, and integrated uh, policies specifically designated to provide social protection to HIV AIDS uh, affected people. Therefore, social protection contributes not only to reducing vulnerabilities to exploitation, but at UNDP, we've also been very honored to have worked on the long journey that NARCO has had in this uh, area to also integrate some of the social protection policies. We are proud that the UNDP supported single world window program with the government of India has increased access to social protection to more than 800,000 people affected and how they need to get their benefits successfully. In closing, therefore, uh, let me just mention that we in UNDP stand by NARCO, the government of India, and all people and organization to reaffirm our commitment to India's response, but also towards ending the AIDS epidemic by 2030. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Yakushulers. Uh, thanks for reminding us the critical role played by the champions from the infected community who has stood ahead in fighting against the stigma associated with HIV. Thanks so much for that. And also the commitment to the program for social protection. Um, thank you so much. Now I would like to invite Dr. Hank Beckedam, WHO representative to India, to deliver his speech.
His Excellency J.P. Nada, the Honorable Union Minister for Health and Family Welfare. His Excellency Mr. Mr. Shripat Yesonaik, Minister of State for Health and Family Welfare. Uh, Mr. B. P. Uh, B. P. Sharma, the Secretary of Health and Family Welfare. Mr. N. S. Khan, Additional Secretary and Director General of the National AIDS Control Organization. Dr. Usama Tawil, the Country Director of UNAIDS. Dr. Yaak Vassilier, Country Director of UNDP. People with living HIV AIDS. Development partners, delegates, friends from the media, and ladies and gentlemen. It gives me a great pleasure to be here with you to commemorate the World AIDS Day. I'm new over here. Last Friday, I started my work as WHO representative to India, and it's a privilege to be here in India and work alongside you in further strengthening health and equity in the country. But first of all, I congratulate the Ministry of Health and Welfare for convening this meeting and commend the government of India for its leadership and continued commitment to the fight against AIDS. The world has come a long way since 2000, achieving the global target of halting and reverting the spread of HIV AIDS. World AIDS Day is an occasion to reaffirm our commitment to end this epidemic as a public health threat by 2030. The time is now to make the final concerted effort. World AIDS Day also reminds us to end stigma and discrimination associated with HIV infection. This issue has often not been addressed effectively. Prevention and awareness are of critical importance for reducing new infections, particularly in low prevalence settings. I cannot overemphasize the importance of continued prevention efforts. Much has been achieved in India. It has remained a low prevalence country and the HIV prevalence has been de declining over the past years. New cases and AIDS-related deaths have both come down. With the increase in ART coverage, both new infections and deaths will come down even further. The success in reversing the HIV epidemic in India has been acclaimed the world over. We commend the government of India for this remarkable achievement. The adoption of the WHO 2013 recommendation to start ART at CD4 count of less than 500, treating key affected population, lifelong ART for HIV infected pregnant women, and offering a one, day pill, one pill a day fixed dose combination to improve treatment adherence are some of the major steps taken by the national ART program. Much program has been achieved in implementing the 2013 recommendation and the National AIDS Control Organization deserves to be congratulated for that. It is vital, however, that the targeted intervention approach to reach out to the high risk groups, including men who have sex with men, is continued. On the 1st of October, WHO released the, the new 2015 WHO ART guidelines, which recommend a treat-all strategy, irrespective of the CD4 count. This evidence-based and backed approach provides an unprecedented opportunity to end AIDS as a public health threat, globally and in India. With new strategies come new opportunities and challenges. The simplification of ART regime offers an opportunity to decentralize the ART services and make it available at the community health center level. The challenges, however, are in terms of the increased numbers that will require ART and the need for capacity building and more funding requirements. The first challenge will be to increase the numbers tested, or what's called the first of the 90%, 90% and reach the unreached. An integrated approach with the National Health Mission is essential. To make this possible, the National AIDS Control Organization, WHO and UNAIDS, held a consultation last week to update and revise the India HIV testing guidelines and optimize HIV testing approaching, including community-based testing approaches for key populations. Before I close, may I reiterate WHO commitment to continue supporting NACO with high-level technical support in its endeavor to provide quality stigma-free, universal access to ART and other hiv aids related activities. Finally, ending AIDS as a public health threat, as a part of sustainable development goals, is now feasible in India. 
We have the scientific evidence and we have the strategies that have worked. We must seize the moment. Thank you again for organizing this event. Thank you, uh, Dr. Henning Bechten, for your uh, renewed commitment towards the National AIDS Control Program in providing technical assistance for stigma-free uh, uh, commodities and universal access to ART. Thank you so much. Now I would request uh, Mr. B.P. Sharma, Secretary, Health and Family Welfare, to kindly deliver his address. Honorable Minister Health and Family Welfare, Sri J.P. Nadda Ji, Sri Sripad Yeso Nayak Ji, Minister of State for Health, Dr. Hendrik Jan Bekedam, WHO Representative to India, Sri Yako Silias, Country Director UNDP, Sri Oshama Tawil, Country Director UNAIDS, Mr. Kang, my uh, other colleagues from NACO and the Ministry, uh, other uh, representatives of people uh, uh, having uh, HIV AIDS, uh, representatives of media, other distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, uh, I would like to extend heartiest welcome to all of you on behalf of the ministry to this very important function. On uh, the occasion of World AIDS Day, I think it's a very opportune moment to you know, reflect on the journey which we had so far and uh, the challenges which we have faced. Uh, we have had considerable success. You know, our prevalence rate is down. It's 0.26%. Uh, and, uh, but of course, the challenges are many. Some states, there are pockets where uh, HIV AIDS uh, prevalence has gone up a bit. So, so there's no reason to be complacent. But yes, I mean, we have had considerable success in bringing the prevalence uh, down. Uh, how did we achieve uh, this progress? This is something which, which we need to reflect. Because those are the elements which would, you know, help us, you know, to control uh, this menace completely. The elements are the evidence-based planning, uh, intersectoral uh, collaboration, involvement of stakeholders, uh, especially the communities, and a very judicious deployment of resources between prevention and uh, care. Uh, these are the principles, I think, which, which should continue to guide us in future. Uh, the, there has to be synergy between HIV prevention and uh, control uh, effort, uh, the control efforts. The, uh, uh, we, we, I, I'm happy to say that uh, we have uh, announced a focused intervention in collaboration with the Reproductive Child Health Program to eliminate uh, congenital syphilis. And uh, we have also decided to, to have uh, the daily dose regime for uh, TB patients who are co-infected with HIV AIDS. Currently, this, this is going on in uh, 30 ART centers, but uh, this is to be implemented in all the 500 ART centers, and uh, the medicines for that is being procured. And uh, very shortly, in three, four months' time, we hope that uh, the daily regime for the TB HIV patients uh, will, be, will be implemented. Uh, there are some other measures uh, which, are, which are being implemented or which are about to be implemented, about which the Minister, Honorable Minister Health and Family Welfare in his remarks would be, would be commenting. Uh, on, uh, but however, on behalf of the Ministry, I would like to reiterate our full support uh, to the program and uh, the zeal and vigor with which the program has been pursued uh, that would be uh, continued. Uh, one issue that has been, you know, uh, come up in the past is of shortage of uh, uh, medicines and uh, the test kits and all that. Uh, some time ago, two, three years ago, the, there, was, there, was, there was some issue on that. But since then, uh, the procurement uh, processes have been uh, tightened and uh, 
I'm very happy to say that we do not have any shortage of any, uh, any medicine or any, any test kit. And uh, this has happened because the NACO uh, has been, you know, monitoring the procurement processes uh, very, very uh, uh, stringently. So I hope that NACO would continue to do that and there won't be any shortage of any medicine, any, any test kit on, in, in future. Uh, on the World AIDS Day, it would be appropriate that we reflect upon the global trends uh, in the field. Uh, the WHO has brought out the revised guidelines about uh, which my previous speakers have mentioned, where all uh, the whosoever is tested positive has to be uh, given uh, the, the medicine. Uh, we, this, this, this was uh, debated recently in a national uh, conference. Uh, the test and treat uh, strategy. Uh, this is currently, we are following only for vulnerable section of the population, for example, pregnant women, children below five years, co-affected patients, etc. Uh, but it's extension to everyone uh, that, of course, it has financial implications and uh, that, of course, we, we, have to, we have to consider that. But, 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 but obviously, we have to move in that direction but we have to look at our financial resources and plan for that. Uh, uh, for now, uh, uh, as uh, up to 500, we have already made the announcement. Uh, the Honorable Minister has already approved that. So that also is an improvement uh, in the positive uh, direction. This 90s to 90s to 90s strategy also uh, will have to be implemented. This also has resource implication. So we will be uh, examining that, and uh, in course of the year, we will, we will certainly like to move in that uh, direction. Uh, so I would conclude by thanking all who have contributed in, the, in this progress by, by NACO and the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, the countless workers in the field, civil society organizations, the affected communities, development partners, research organizations, they have all contributed, and I hope that in future also the support from, from them would be forthcoming and we would, we would be moving ahead and we'll achieve the target of, uh, by two, 2030 of eliminating AIDS completely. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for reminding us that there is no room for complacency and we should continue with the same vigor to continue achieve what we've achieved. And thank you so much for the commitment that there would not be shortage of commodities and life-saving drugs hereafter. Thank you so much. Uh, now I request the Honorable Minister of State for Health and Family Welfare, Sri Sri Patnaik, sir, to kindly address the gathering. Honorable Union Minister for Health and Family Welfare, Mr. Jagat Prasad Prakash Nandaji, Sri B.P. Sharma Ji, Secretary Health and Family Welfare, Dr. Hendrik John Bakedam Ji, World Health Organization Representative India, Sri Jaco Silier Ji, Country Director, UNDP India, Sri Osama Tawilji, Country Coordinator, UN AIDS India, Sri N.S. Kangji, Additional Secretary, NACO, Friends from Media, Ladies and Gentlemen. Today this World's Aid Day 2015, after taking a stock of the challenges that we have faced in the last few decades and the efforts which has resulted in our success in reducing the new infections and avert many deaths in because of the collective response of all the concerned stakeholders. We should but make a firm commitment to sustain the achievements of the past decades and do more, do better, and reach further for the eventual victory over the HIV AIDS. We have lost many of our friends to this infection. But today, 
with improved medicinal medical and treatment facility we can ensure better and productive life for people infected and affected with hiv we are all aware that india with a population of 1.2 billion is a multi ethnic multi lingual and multi religious society cohabiting together we have more than 300 million youth age in between 10 to 24 years this makes our country the largest nation with youth population in august this year i was a part of the international youth day event and was happy to see the youth of our country participating with a great enthusiasm and giving the message of collective sharing the responsibility of dissemination of the information amongst their peers dispels all form of myths and misconception and fights stigma and discrimination against the people infected and affected with hiv this youth force and motivated can change the face of the world provided by the knowledgeable and skilled to handle the adverse situation as well hiv amongst the other communicable and non communicable diseases has greater impact on individuals and households the skill india initiative announced by the honorable prime minister sri narendra bhai modi ji will equip with youth to earn a livelihood improving their quality of life neco under the ministry of health and family welfare is using several platform to ensure awareness generation so that youth stays hiv free are able to address all forms of stigma and discrimination and dispel of all form of the myths and misconception surrounding hiv and aids the youth also has power to create the much needed enabling environment for all to access health service for testing and training and without the fear i am sure that the youth of our country needs to take a conscious decision if not only keeping the themselves safe but to educate others who are at risk to also lead a safe life forging forwards with a firm step will make us a resilient nation we have about 0.27% of the people living with hiv but the real duty of all of us is to ensure that the remaining 99.73 person never get hiv infection and this possible by our con concentrated effort towards the same on this occasion i would also like to remind us that the special needs of the children infected and affected by the aids it is our responsibility to ensure that these children grow up and are able to have a healthy life and are able to fulfill their dreams and aspiration like any other child sabka saath sabka vikas we want all of you to join this fight against hiv and aids and no one i repeat no one is left out from the receiving the prevention care support and treatment india's national aids control program is amongst those few strategies which has been replicated by the many nations as we contain the epidemic effectively the success of the same is because of efforts of all the stakeholders including the communities we all know that we should no aids for no aids and thus take life one day at a time live the present moment which cautions and stay happy every after we stand com committed in our fight against hiv to end the epidemic of the aid by 2030 by this word i thank you again jai hind thank you sir uh, thanks for reminding us that it is very critical for the program to focus on prevention and save the young generation from hiv thank you sir 
As we've heard today, and as we know, HIV is not merely a health issue. This, there is growing evidence that social protection can help reduce a person's vulnerability and mitigate the impact of HIV. It helps individuals, households, and communities to better manage risks and participate actively in all spheres of life. In its comprehensive form, social protection measures include access to healthcare, nutrition, livelihood, housing, legal aid, financial assistance, education, and so on. Ladies and gentlemen, now we will screen the documentary highlighting the positive impact of social protection on the infected and affected communities. सपना एक किन्नर है क्या है इसके अधिकार पहले तो बहुत मुश्किल थी भगा देते थे हमें ऑफिस से कि आपका कोई अधिकार नहीं है रूबी एक यौन कर्मी है क्या इसके बच्चे भी पढ़ने के हैं हकदार मैं चाहती हूँ कि मेरे बच्चे अच्छे लाए बने क्योंकि मैं नहीं चाहती जो दुख हमने उठाया वो हमारे बच्चे उठाए ये जलालुद्दीन है परदेश में रहकर ये कैसे अपने घर को चला रहा है और ये है आशा एच के साथ कैसी है इसकी जिंदगी मुझे कुछ सालों पहले ये बात पता चली कि मैं एच आई पॉजिटिव हूँ और उसके बाद फिर मेरी सास ने मुझे टॉर्चर करना शुरू कर दिया जिंदगी हमेशा एक सी नहीं रहती ख्वाहिशें हमेशा अधूरी नहीं रहती अब इनको मिला आधार जिसने बनाया इन्हें हकदार जीने का दिया अधिकार गवर्नमेंट द्वारा जो विडो पेंशन आती है तो उससे मैं अपने बच्चों का अच्छे से पालन पोषण कर रही हूँ और अच्छी जिंदगी जी रही हूँ तब मेरे पास पहचान हो गई है आप लोगों की तरह पहचान पत्र बन गया है तो अपने जैसे बैंक का खाता खुला लिया है सबसे पहला तो खाश मुझे डॉक्टर बनाने का मेरी लड़की को एक आस है खुशियों का एहसास है आज किसी के पास रोजगार है किसी के पास रहने को घर है बच्चे स्कूल जा रहे हैं अपनी पहचान बनाने और कोई अपनी पहचान पाकर खुश है ये कहीं पे भी इजीली ये लोग रेंट पे कमरा ले सकते हैं कहीं पे भी इजीली काम कर सकते हैं बोल सकते हैं अपने हक के लिए आवाज उठा सकते हैं ये योजनाएं कुछ केंद्र शासित हैं और कुछ राज्यों द्वारा लागू करी गई हैं जिनमें से कुछ प्रमुख हैं राष्ट्रीय स्वास्थ्य बीमा योजना जनधन योजना आवास योजना पेंशन योजनाएं मिड डे मील अंत्योदय अन्न योजना आदि और इसका श्रेय जाता है राष्ट्रीय एड्स नियंत्रण संगठन की यूनिट जिला स्तर पर एड्स से बचाव एवं रोकथाम के लिए गठित इकाई डेपक्यू को जो एक सिंगल विंडो का काम कर रहा है हाई वर्नेबल जो पॉपुलेशन होती है और उनकी जो आवश्यकताएं होती हैं उनकी आर्थिक स्थिति के लिए उनके स्वास्थ्य के लिए या उनको रोजगार दिलाना है उनकी सब आवश्यकताओं को करने के लिए डेपक्यू जो सिंगल विंडो लीड है वो कार्यरत है सरकार की तरफ से हमारा हजार रुपया आता है मेरे बच्चे का हजार रुपया आता है तो उसकी पढ़ाई का कुछ खर्चा उठा लेते हैं घर के खर्चे के लिए थोड़ा बहुत ले लेते हैं मैं अच्छा कमा रहा हूँ मेरी दो बेटियाँ हैं उनको अच्छे स्कूल में पढ़ा रहा हूँ हमें एक ऐसा समाज बनाना है जहाँ सब बराबर हों सबके हक बराबर हों सबके अधिकार बराबर हों सबका विकास बराबर हो एक ऐसी जिंदगी हो जो खुशहाल हो और बेहतर हो जाने अधिकार बने हकदार आगे आए जिंदगी बेहतर बनाएं। सामाजिक सुरक्षा योजनाओं का हक दिलवाने में हम माप के साथ हैं ये नाको भारत सरकार स्वास्थ्य एवं परिवार कल्याण मंत्रालय की पहल यूएस एड की पिप्सी परियोजना और यूएनडीपी द्वारा समर्थित है NACO has taken efforts on several initiatives as part of the digital digital India to improve quality and efficiency of the programs. We are pleased to have a few such initiatives launched today by our honourable Minister for Health and Family Welfare. To begin with, we have developed the HIV-sensitive social protection portal. This contains over 125 schemes that are HIV-sensitive. State-wide schemes. and the details are provided including the application forms wherever available sir may i kindly request you to kindly launch the 
social protection portal. This will help the counselors of the Social Protection Help Desk at the district level to facilitate increased uptake of the schemes by the infected and the affected communities. Now, I request the Honorable Minister to kindly release the posters and the audio visual aimed at improving the uptake of social protection schemes by the infected and the affected communities. Thank you, sir. People living with HIV are almost 30 times more likely to develop TB than persons without HIV. To train the staff of NACP and RNTCP working at the district and sub-district level, an uh, e-training HIV TB module has been developed by NACO and the Central TB Division of Ministry of Health with the support of ILFS India. This integrated e-training module includes all updated knowledge regarding HIV TB, which will improve the participants' knowledge on diagnosis, treatment, preventive measures related to HIV TB. Sir, may I kindly request you to launch the module. This module is intended to train more than 16,000 staff at district level, including medical officers, ART medical officers, uh, medical officers of the TB control program, staff nurses, counselors, and the general health system staff. A certificate will be issued after the su successful completion of the module. This will be helpful to improve the effectiveness, efficiency, and sustainability of Government of India's response to TBHIV. Thank you, sir. The next launch is the online training module for the opioid substitution therapy, which is ready for the rollout. This enables the participants to acquaint themselves with the various aspects of the OST till such time they get an opportunity to attend the formal classroom trainings. So may I kindly request you to launch the distance learning program. The certificate will be awarded to the participants upon successful completion of the course. The certificate will also enable the participant to start delivery of OST services at their centers. We will now launch the PPTCT ART linkage software. This is a web-based system which enables in creating longitudinal cohort details of all HIV positive pregnant and breastfeeding women and the newborn babies until the baby is tested for HIV at 18 months of age. Sir, may I kindly request you to launch the system. The system will help in documenting, improving the health outcomes of mothers and their children, facilitating elimination of parent to child transmission of HIV in India. The National AIDS Control Program has always been appreciated for its evidence-based strategies. The program is always flexible to adopt newer strategies based on the evidence that is generated from time to time. Today, we are releasing the awaited technical report of India HIV Estimations 2015. Sir, may I kindly request you to release the technical report.
Thank you so much, sir. It provides the current status of the HIV epidemic in the country and the state's union territories on key parameters of HIV prevalence, estimated number of people living with HIV, new HIV infections, age-related mortality and treatment needs. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, today, NACO, in collaboration with CDC, has also started an online social campaign for creating awareness through Twitter, Facebook, and other various other social portals. We are happy to share with you that the Honorable Minister has also tweeted today morning. We request each one of you to support and promote the campaign through the hashtag NoAidsForNoAids. Now, I request the Chair, Honorable Minister for Health and Family Welfare, sir, please deliver your key note address. My esteemed colleague, Minister of State for Health and Family Welfare, Shripad Yeso Nayadji, Secretary Health, uh, Fa Health and Family Welfare, Shri Bhanu Pratap Sh Sharma Ji, Shri N.S. Kang Ji, Additional Secretary, who looks after the NACO also, Dr. Hendrik Jain Bekedem, WHO Representative in India, Shri Chavil, UNAIDS Country Director, distinguished guests on the dais, members of the development partners, friends from the media, and ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed, uh, today we are remembering, as a Remembrance Day, which is known as the World's AIDS Day. And we remember today countless millions who have lost their lives because of AIDS. And today we also remember those who contributed to fight AIDS. It is a day where we introspect and try to see that this dreaded disease, HIV, which started in the 80th, in the 80s. And uh, it was like a disease which was uncontrollable at one point of time. Millions of people lost their lives, and millions fought and contributed to fight this dreaded disease. Certainly, it's a, when we remember this day, today in 2015, we can say that we have gone a long way in controlling this dreaded disease, in preventing people in making people quality of life of the people who suffer from HIV infection. And the strategies adopted by India has been globally recognized also by the development partners and by the international health agencies also. Certainly India has done a very good job in this uh, matter, in this field, and we have tried our level best to see to it that not only we control, we prevent and not only uh, we prevent, we also see that the quality of the life of the person who's suffering from HIV should be improved upon. But uh, certainly we have to think on one aspect, that is we can't be complacent. We have to be on alert. And uh, if we have to develop the end game strategy in 2030. We have to be alert and see to it that we strategize, re-strategize, supervise, monitor, and see what new methodology is to be developed so that we are successful in 2030 to develop the end game and, and bring it to an end. The government of India is very serious on this issue. This seriousness can be expressed by one way that Prime Minister has decided and declared that uh, the NACO and the control and the financial part of this program 
will be totally taken care by the center. It will be the central sector. <laughs> this shows our commitment. This shows that the government of India is serious on the issue. We are working on it, and we are trying to see to it that the all expenses be borne by the central government. Today I am happy, I never knew that I will get an opportunity to uh, share with you because when I was the member of uh, on the Standing Committee in Parliament for Health, representatives fighting HIV in patients or HIV people having HIV positive, their association used to come and meet me and they used to talk about that the CD count 350, we start giving medicines only after CD count 350, it should be increased. I got an opportunity when I was in the, as, as, as an health minister, today I can share with you, and as my secretary, Bhanu Pratapji has told you, that government of India has decided that uh, CD count 500, till 500, the government of India is going to provide medicines and see to it that uh, we, the count level, that is the ART, antiretroviral therapy, will be at CD4, count at 500. So this is, this has been decided. I never knew that I'll get the opportunity to share with you as a health minister. But yes, when I came, uh, the representatives met me and uh, I'm uh, happy to share with you that this the government has decided. And within weeks, the procedure will start. The procurement process is on and approximately one lakh people will be included in this program and, see, and we'll try to help them. The same way, it was one very important demand from the, uh, from my, from the friends uh, suffering from HIV uh, positive uh, virus. That is to start the third line treatment. I'm happy to share with you that government has decided to start the third line treatment also. <laughs> and I remember at those, that point of time, many organizations had come and represented it. And when I was also among the uh, committee of the uh, fighting the AIDS uh, in the health ministry, in the, in the uh, parliament committee, there also this demand was there. So now we are going uh, fast into it and see to it. As uh, it has been said that uh, infection should not carry from the mother to the child. This is also a very important area where we are working. We have been successful in it. We are trying to see to it. Uh, we have made tests compulsory and we are trying to see to it that no child is born with HIV positive. A test and treatment process we are trying to see to it also that in coming times, how do we proceed forward? And we are trying to go for the financial aspect of it and resources to be uh, taken care so that uh, we are able to uh, address this problem. In coming times, we feel that we'll be able to do it. Capacity building is as uh, it was uh, uh, also uh, raised by Mr. Beckedem and uh, Mr. Tavel is a continuous process. And as I said, that strategy, re-strategizing, supervision, monitoring, and when we go for new strategies, uh, uh, we have to also see to it that the capacity building is done. So it's a, I consider it to be a continuous process. No doubt, our system, ha we have developed a very robust system now. Things are in place, very much in place, but still, we, we should not feel that uh, we are, the task is over. It is a continuous process. We have to see to it that how we go on increasing our capacity. And for that, I, we need the support of the society, we need the support of the media, we need the support of the stakeholders, we need the support of development partners, and uh, all together, because one man cannot think, or one person or one ministry cannot think uh, in totality. It is the stakeholders we, who come out with new, new issues and we have to address those issues and we have, to, and I'm, I'm a person who believes that we do not address the issues individually or as a ministry. We address the issue collectively. 
So in that very uh, way, I would like to say, in that, in that perspective, I would like to say that we have to go forward. Uh, the strategy of 1990-90 is uh, certainly very important for us. Uh, that is the, uh, the perspective which we should keep it in mind. And our ministry is working in that direction. And we will see. It's a con as I said, it's a continuous process. We can't say that uh, we will be reaching very soon or, or we, we are to reach. But yes, when we keep that perspective in mind, it's uh, certainly going to help us and see to it that uh, we fight. Uh, removing stigma, uh, equal participation, making them feel that they are one among us and see to it that uh, they go hand in hand in development and uh, leading their life. These are issues which has to be also addressed collectively. One cannot do by making just a law. One cannot do by just uh, uh, providing provisions of equality. One cannot do by, give, by coming out with provisions uh, of uh, treating them at workplaces. But we have to see to it and find out the fine uh, issues which certainly uh, is a barrier and develops as a stigma between the, between, as a, uh, develops as a stigma. So these issues also need to be addressed. And the support of media and uh, other people is uh, certainly very much uh, invited and very much needed also. The digital part which we have uh, launched today, many schemes have been launched today. They are going to help, I suppose, last year when I had launched a helpline scheme, I'm happy to share with you that seven lakh, more than seven lakh people have uh, uh, dialed on that number and tried to consult, which is a huge number, and which itself says, says that that has been very beneficial and very good for us, for, uh, for the HIV positive uh, uh, patients, and uh, they have been able to take advice from that. As far as the medicines are concerned, India has been not only, as, as Secretary has said, that uh, the, there were issues related to procurement, but now we have got a very robust system. So medicine is not an issue. And even for third line treatment, we are there to take care. And the same way uh, for uh, CD count, uh, CD, CD4 uh, less than 500, that will be also taken care. That is not the issue. But I'm happy to note that on the initiative of Prime Minister Sri Modi ji, when the African nations heads of the states had come to India last month only, we had a session with them, we discussed with them, they had issues that in Africa, where we will, will, we will be able to give them uh, quality medicines and affordable medicines. India has shown its commitment and we stand committed that all African nations will be getting and will be carrying on with this process where we'll, giving, we'll be giving them affordable and quality medicines. So this shows our commitment not uh, for, uh, for the nation only, but uh, for our uh, countries and we think globally also and our global commitment stands as it is. So friends, today I will only say one thing that when we remember and we, when we uh, introspect as World's AIDS Day, we should uh, leave no stone unturned to see to it that we end by 2030. And for that, whatever has to be done, we should take care and work together hand in hand and collectively and see to it that uh, we really make this program a success. We have done a good job, but need not to take rest. We have to keep on fighting. We have to go forward. And with all your support, we'll be able to do it. That is what I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for that uh, announcements of uh, starting ARTA at uh, 500 CD4 count and for in com committing the third line ART. I'm sure this will go long way in saving lives of many people, including young women and children, and also improve their quality of lives. Thank you so much, sir. Now let me request Sri Anas Kang to propose the word of thanks.
Shri J.P. Nadda Ji, Honorable Minister for Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. Shri Shripad Naik, Minister of State in the Ministry of Health. Shri B.P. Sharma, Secretary of Health to the Government of India. Other dignitaries on the dais, friends, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the National AIDS Control Organization and the entire Ministry of Health, let me thank you for your participation in this important occasion when we remember those thousands and millions who have succumbed to the HIV AIDS infection and also recognize the efforts of countless others who have contributed toward their lives, their resources, their efforts towards achieving the success that the speakers before me have outlined both at the national and at the global level. I would especially thank uh, the Honorable Minister for being here with us today, it, not only as a mark of his commitment towards the cause of combating HIV AIDS, but also for his leadership for, for the ministry, uh, uh, leadership towards the ministry over the last more than a, a year. I think it's because of his commitment and his decisive leadership that the initiatives that have been announced today and which were in the offing for the last many, many, many years have actually come to fruition. And sir, I would like to assure you that uh, as per your directions, we would actually implement this on the ground within the coming weeks. Uh, Shri Shirpad Nayak also has shared the responsibility of leading the ministry's efforts, not only in the field of HIV AIDS control, but towards the entire health scenario in the country. And we are grateful for his presence as well as his leadership of the ministry. The Secretary, Shri B.P. Sharma, I think all of us recognize that he keeps us on his toes with his, not only with his incisive comments on file, but also with his constant monitoring of various initiatives. And I think we all recognize that in the last one year or so that he has been there, we have all been able to perform and deliver better. And we thank him for his leadership towards this. The representatives of some UN agencies are here on the dais. Some are sitting among the audience. Apart from UN agencies, they are representatives of other development partners, national and international. All of them have contributed generously in terms of technical assistance and other resources towards the success that we have achieved over the last few decades. And on this occasion, I would be remiss if I do not recognize their contribution towards our efforts. Members of the community, a big thank you to all of you I think you are the basic purpose and the focus of our work. And our success can only be judged by the fact whether we are able to make your, your fight, your resistance against the infection more meaningful, more strong. That is the true uh, in indicator of our performance. And I'm happy to note and I like to think that the National AIDS Control Program has been lucky and fortunate in having the support of the community in all its efforts. Thank you so much, and we hope that this collaborative spirit will continue. Uh, I'd like to thank the members of the media. I don't think any national program which impacts the lives of millions can succeed without the media's understanding and its subjective feedback that we obtain from different sources. And we are lucky that I think we've had the support of the media in this attempt, and I thank all the representatives who are present here. Lastly, a big thank you to all my colleagues in the ministry and the National AIDS Control Organization, not only for organizing today's function, but your hard work over the years that has led us to this situation that we can confidently say that we can work towards ending the HIV AIDS epidemic as a public health threat in the next 15 years or so. Apart from the government machinery, it is the efforts of various academics, research organizations, and community organizations that have helped us in this task. And a big thank you to all of you. Thank you once again, and thank you for being here. Thanks so much. As we know, the red ribbon is a global symbol for solidarity towards HIV positive people and those living with AIDS. Today, our presence reassures our solidarity towards the cause and the people infected and affected by HIV. Thanks so much for joining us today afternoon. Have a good evening. Thank you so much, sir.